All right, guys, so now that we've got the right thickness of webbing and we've got the D-ring that we actually want to be able to use, we do want to prevent it from falling off. And if I slide this guy on really quick, you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll see just how easy it can come straight back off. However, if I slide it all the way on, one thing that you'll notice is as I slide it to the other end, it doesn't come off. It's got a little catch there. So what we need to do on this end is create a, qu a quick little catch. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, we're going to be talking about the sliding D-ring and why I've used it over the years and why I've chose not to use it over the years. But I'm going to show you one of the biggest concerns that I've always had with this, but I'm going to show you a simple fix to where this sliding D-ring can be a very useful tool for you. So if you're a side mount diver, you will understand that typically you're going to have two fixed D-rings on your waist strap, or you'll have one sliding D-ring on your waist strap. And what that's designed for is, let's say you're diving aluminum cylinders in side mount. As that aluminum cylinder starts to get a little floaty, you can unclip from one, clip to the next, or if you're using a sliding D-ring, you can simply slide it forward into position, and then it'll catch and hold. But let me show you really quick why a lot of divers, a lot of side mount divers have concerns with the sliding D-ring. All right, so the one in question that I'm using here, this is from Dive Right. This is actually a very well-built system here, and I actually like this one. The ones I've used in the past, I wasn't too keen on, but let me show you how this actually works. All you do is just simply thread it up on, and you will notice that there's a smooth side and a tooth side. So as I put it on there, you will notice that it moves freely. And as long as there's no tension on it, it will not grab. It'll just allow me to slide it back and forth. But as soon as you put a little bit of tension on it, those teeth are going to dig in. Now, here lies the problem. Depending on the thickness or the density of the webbing itself, it may not grab enough. So imagine if I'm sliding this around and I clip off a tank. As you can see, as I put just a little bit of tension, it's going to grab, but it's still going to slide. Now, the reason that it's sliding is, like I said, the thickness of this webbing is not actually thick enough. So let's get a thicker piece of webbing here. And let's see how it moves on this one. It's a little bit thicker piece of webbing. As you can see, it's going to move freely. But as soon as I start to put tension on it from one side to the next, it actually locks in. It grabs in. It's not going to move. So for this particular sliding D-ring, this thickness of webbing here is exactly what you're going to want before you use it. So the second concern that I've always had with some type of sliding D-ring is what do you do when you're taking your system off? And let me explain. If we look at my waist strap here, as I undo the buckle, you will notice that the buckle itself is on the left-hand side. And that's going to provide a pretty decent stop to prevent that sliding D-ring from simply sliding off. Here on the right side, though, you'll notice there's nothing there to stop it. And if I slide it forward far enough or if I let it dangle, the weight itself can actually pop that sliding D-ring off. So I'm gonna show you a simple fix that you can do to make sure that this guy does not actually come off when you don't want it to. All right guys, so now that we've got the right thickness of webbing and we've got the D-ring that we actually wanna be able to use, we do wanna prevent it from falling off. And if I slide this guy on really quick, you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll see just how easy it can come straight back off. However, if I slide it all the way on, one thing that you'll notice is as I slide it to the other end, it doesn't come off. It's got a little catch there. So what we need to do on this end is create a, qu a quick little catch. So what I'm going to do is just lay the D-ring down. I'm going to take a lighter, and I'm just going to heat up the very end of the webbing here, and then I'm going to press it down here on the metal table. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a nice uh, flat edge here that kind of mushrooms out, if you will, and that's going to prevent that D-ring from coming off. So I'm going to go ahead and slide the D-ring on. Get it out of the way. And then we're just going to take our lighter. Once we got it nice and hot, you might see it bubbling up a little bit. You can put it on any flat edge there, and all you're doing is just kind of flattening it out. Just like so. And now, she should stay on. So, of course, both sides have been flattened out, and she's not going to fall off. And we can also test, just to make sure that we didn't make it too big, that it can still go through the buckle here on our BC. 
So there you go, guys. That's the slot and D-ring. Like I said, this one specifically is from Dive Ride. I've actually switched back to using this. Over the years, I've used stationary D-rings and I've used slide D-rings. And I like them both for different reasons. But yeah, if you ever have trouble with these not grabbing, you might want to get a thicker webbing for your harness. And then, of course, if you're ever afraid that it's going to fall off, all you got to do is just simply melt the ends of your webbing, flatten it out, and you shouldn't have any issues. Because I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it educational. I hope you found it very helpful as well. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it. If you've got any suggestions on how you can keep these D-rings from coming off the end of your webbing, drop me a comment down below because I love to learn from you guys as well. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. Until our next one, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.